Today, I'm in the company of Ignazio Marino, transplant surgeon, professor of surgery at Thomas Jefferson University, former Italian senator, former mayor of Rome, and now back at Jefferson in Philadelphia, executive director of the Jefferson Italy Center and executive vice president for international innovative strategic ventures. Welcome, Dr. Marino. It's a real honor to have you in the show. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very, very pleased to be with you and to discuss uh, some uh, relevant issues about uh, our two countries and two continents. Perfect. Well, to give you a sense of who Dr. Marino is, uh, well, his journey in medicine and surgery uh, started from the Università Cattolica del Sacro Cuore in Rome and developed first at the University of Cambridge and then at the University of Pittsburgh where he specialized in liver transplants. Uh, in 2002, he moved to Philadelphia, where he became professor of surgery and director of transplantation at Thomas Jefferson University. In 2006, he was elected in the Italian Senate, where he served as chairman, first of the Senate Standing Committee on Health, and then of the Investigative Committee on the Italian National Health Service. Between 2013 and 2015, he served as the mayor of Rome. And in 2016, at his return to Philadelphia, he took on again his position at Jefferson and started a dual medical degree program partnering Jefferson and the School of Medicine of the Univers Università Cattolica in Rome. I'm really not making justice here to all his achievements, uh, including among others, groundbreaking surgeries. Uh, he was a member of the team that performed the only two baboon to human liver transplants in medical history. Uh, it includes also prestigious directorships, uh, 500 peer-reviewed peer articles, and a book. Uh, but it would be impossible to list everything here. Uh, perhaps we, we can refer to or comment upon some of these achieve achievements during our conversation. Today, we'll focus on Italy and medicine, observing the Italian contributions to global health from a cultural, scientific, and political perspective. Starting from your experience at Jefferson, uh, we'll also discuss about bilateral partnerships uh, between Italy and the United States and the current state of Italian medical research. Now, let me start with uh, a question about the present situation. Uh, in the midst of the coronavirus crisis, especially at the time when Italy was hit the hardest, uh, many questions asked about or commented upon the Italian healthcare system. Despite the plethora of opinions, the World Health Organization actually ranked Italy second for overall efficiency in 2020, right after France. The US are number 37. Before entering the specific Italian case, how is the healthcare quality of a country measured? And what are the factors in play in assessing a healthcare system? In order to answer uh, to your very, very important question, I, um, you know, I, I think that uh, um, even this is uh, probably well known if we concentrate on, uh, on, uh, on issues like uh, uh, life expectancy and uh, global health care. Uh, will be really interesting to um, look at this uh, um, incredible uh, uh, graphic where uh, you know we see the life expectancy of uh, uh, human beings prepared by by the World Health Organization uh, a few years ago, and uh, it shows that basically until uh, the beginning of last century, so until the beginning, uh, uh, until around uh, um, 1910, uh, 1915, uh, the life expectancy of, of human beings in the entire history, so we are talking about million, millions of years, uh, was uh, around uh, um, uh, the average expectancy, expect, life expectancy was around 40, 42 years of age. Obviously, there were people living much more than that, but this is the average length of life. In the, in the last 100 years, something incredible, 
really incredible happened. And uh, mm, as you can see here, um, in, uh, in different continents, uh, the life expectancy um, doubled. So uh, basically in uh, Italy uh, or Europe, uh, we have now a life expectancy that is uh, 84, 85 years uh, compared to 40, 42. Um, in the United States, as you can see, the life expectancy is uh, actually lower than in Europe. And, uh, and if we check in this, uh, this second uh, slide, you see that uh, the life expectancy, uh, the country with the best life expectancy is Australia, but Italy is number two. And, uh, and then you see a number of other countries, Spain, Sweden, France, Austria, and so on, um, un uh, until number 18. And then you have uh, USA, number 19. And what do these countries that are all in front of uh, USA in common? The thing that they have in common is a national healthcare system. In other words, the universal access to healthcare. And, uh, and this is a very, very important uh, point. As you uh, uh, mentioned, uh, you know, the World Health Organization ranking uh, um, uh, shows that uh, France is first, Italy second, and USA number 37, as you can see in this, uh, in this, uh, in this slide. And the last uh, uh, numbers and figures that I want to show to you is uh, the, uh, the uh, health spending uh, per person in different countries. And you see here, that uh, in, uh, in the United States, uh, um, the, um, the spending for health is uh, about 17% 17, 17 of the GDP. In Italy, uh, and uh, more or less in other countries in Europe, is 9% of uh, the GDP. So uh, back to um, our conversation and your question, why uh, we have a continent, a country, where we spend 17% of the gross domestic uh, uh, product and, uh, and we have outcomes that are much inferior uh, to countries where we spend half of uh, that. The reason is very, very simple. There is only one real important uh, uh, point, which is uh, the universal access uh, uh, to healthcare. And it's something that, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, became a, a very, very important point of discussion and action during the recent uh, pandemic uh, with the coronavirus. And all of a sudden, United States of America uh, had to make the decision to allow every patient, uh, regardless, uh, um, you know, uh, the uh, wealthy status uh, or uh, if they had or did not have an, a medical insurance to be um, admitted in a hospital uh, because it became really a, 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 an issue of national national uh, um, emergency. So, mm, you know, the, the bottom line is that uh, um, Italy has uh, uh, probably, particularly in, 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 in a few regions of the south of Italy, uh, less uh, technology than we may have in most of the important uh, uh, hospitals uh, in the United States. But on the other hand, and the fact that uh, um, if you, um, uh, if you uh, get sick, for example, for uh, uh, a very common disease like diabetes, um, you in Italy have uh, the opportunity to go to your physician, uh, to centers that are specialized in diabetes, and you will be followed for your chronic disease 
for your entire life. Here in the uh, United States, we certainly, as I say, have uh, uh, tremendous technology, but um, unfortunately, uh, we have um, the percentage uh, of uh, uh, amputation for uh, uh, diabetes, a percentage of amputation for diabetes that uh, is much higher uh, than uh, mm, the percentage in Italy or in Europe. And why is that? Is because uh, if you have diabetes and you have no medical insurance and you mm, have, uh, you know, you get very sick, um, um, maybe you enter in a coma because uh, of very high. Uh, glucose in your blood or very low glucose in your uh, blood, uh, you have the right to be um, admitted and treated in the emergency room. But after the treatment for that single episode, you're left alone. You're left yeah, by your no follow up. Yeah. Uh, there is no follow up, there is no medication, there is no nothing. And so eventually you get very sick and you may need an amputation of one leg because of the diabetes. So um, I hope that uh, I was able with this example to explain uh, why, um, why this uh, um, difference in cost and in outcomes is so striking and important. But let me um, say one other um, thing, I introduce another concept that is very important in the spending and in the outcome. Um, uh, Europe, uh, now for many, many years, every country in Europe is negotiating with the, the drug company, the cost of the drugs. So. In, in uh, uh, 2014, we had uh, a, a tremendous, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, important uh, new drug uh, that was introduced uh, in, uh, in the world. It's called the Sofosbuvir, and it's the first drug ever capable to kill the virus of the hepatitis C. Um, in the following year, uh, um, millions of uh, um, doses were uh, uh, given to um, people uh, every, almost everywhere in the, in the world. And uh, the treatment with this new drug in Europe uh, um, had a cost of 14, uh, dollars $14,000. In the United States, $84,000. Why is that? Because uh, mm, the uh, countries in Europe are regularly negotiating the cost of, of a drug with a drug company. In the uh, United States, uh, this uh, uh, so far uh, never, never happened. So there is a free market and the, the drug company uh, uh, asks the price that they think uh, is more convenient. And, uh, and obviously this has a tremendous impact on the cost of healthcare. And uh, mm, if we could use in the United States uh, uh, the money in a, you know, in a more savvy way, we probably will be able uh, to offer universal uh, uh, treatment, uh, universal health care to all the citizens. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for this overview of the uh, general health care systems in the world. And you mentioned something about the Italian system already, but I really wanted to uh, focus our attention on, on the national Italian health care system in particular. So how is it organized as a scientific and, and political level, and in your in your opinion, what are its uh, distinctive points of element of, of excellence? Well, uh, uh, there is something that um, all Italians should be extremely extremely proud, um, uh, and is uh, uh, the uh, uh, Italian Constitution, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm referring to one article of the Italian Constitution is article number 32. Uh, that article is just a few lines and is uh, mm, uh, about uh, healthcare. Um, you have to consider that uh, uh, um, the World Healthcare 
does not exist in the uh, Constitution of uh, United States of uh, America. Uh, it exists in other, uh, in other constitutions, but Italy is the only country in the world uh, that has really uh, a specific wording uh, about uh, health care that is really unique. Uh, the people who wrote uh, our constitution many years ago used the, the, uh, the uh, word citizens almost uh, in every article referred to the people. In article 32, uh, uh, they used the, the Italian word individuo, that means uh, person. And, uh, mm, and, and why they decide to, to do so? Why they change the, the, uh, from citizen to person? Because they believed, and I think this is really a great, great thing of the Italian, thing of the Italian constitution, they believed that uh, Healthcare should be offered to everybody, regardless, uh, uh, you know, any other consideration. So, if you find yourself sick in Italy, uh, um, the Italian national health system will take care of you. Obviously, things uh, uh, um, were not easy because to build a national health system is not something that you can do overnight and. Uh, uh, to be honest, we need to say that uh, that was written in the Constitution, so in uh, 1947, but uh, uh, we had to wait until 1978 uh, in order to uh, start the national health system. In 1978, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, had a law um, that established the national health system uh, as it is uh, today. Um, actually, uh, in my humble opinion, it was uh, better than uh, today because uh, then the parliament uh, in 2001 uh, decided to uh, change uh, some um, articles of the con in the constitution and, uh, and so the, um, the national health system is still centralized, so everything reports to the Minister of Health, but the real, um, uh, you know, healthcare delivery um, is uh, um, organized region by region. And having 20 different regions, now we have uh, significant differences. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so, you can have uh, extremely high quality of uh, healthcare in some region, and uh, you know other region are really suffering because they do not have uh, uh, the same level of uh, uh, quality quality of care. So, in other words, uh, um, the uh, the national health system is uh, really a tremendous, tremendous uh, um, tool uh, to make uh, all the citizen equal. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, having a public school or private school. Uh, education, healthcare, I believe uh, should be, uh, um, should be offered uh, to everybody. And, uh, and uh, if they are not, uh, then uh, we will have a significant uh, social difference. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, on the one hand, the element of the universal service, but also the element of the person as the individual, not necessarily the customer um, in, in the... Yeah, I can tell you uh, something that uh, I have experienced many, many times. Um, uh, very wealthy, uh, U.S. citizen, um, um, you know, uh, sometimes uh, traveling to Italy, um, got sick, uh, some of them with uh, uh, very important uh, uh, disease, and they were admitted to the emergency room, treated, and uh, at the end they were expecting a bill, and they didn't get uh, uh, a bill because, uh, you know, they got sick on the Italian territory, and uh, mm, right or wrong, uh, Italy, uh, you know, assists everybody for free.
So I want to focus our attention now on the culture of medicine. Um, and at an historical level, really, Italian culture has been a fertile soil for the evolution of the modern idea of care or medicine. Uh, there are like Italian Renaissance hospitals that are witnesses to this rich history, like you know this uh, 15th century Hospital of the Innocents that was designed by Brunelleschi in Florence for the care of, of abandoned children, or the 15th century Cagranda, uh, designed by Filarete in Milan, uh, which is now turned into the University of Milan. Uh, I studied in it, and um, the uh, largest library was actually the surgery room of the Renaissance Hospital. It was quite fascinating. Now, in terms of research, um, Leonardo's anatomical drawings or the anatomic theater of the University of Bologna, where the first human dissections and autopsies were conducted, are really testaments to the Italian leading role in, in medicine historically. So what, what impact does this history have on the Italian idea of healthcare? And what are the pillars, if we want, of, of this Italian culture of medicine? Italy is, uh, without uh, any doubt, uh, the country where uh, medicine and surgery um, had... Uh, an incredible development in the last uh, several centuries. Um, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, people like Leonardo da Vinci, who actually uh, was able to design uh, the, um, the human body, the anatomy, and um, understand uh, um, a lot uh, of uh, the physiology of the of the human body, and um, we um, uh, we should not forget that these people was not really terrific uh, because their brain, their intelligence, uh, um, uh, the, the way that uh, uh, they really created the uh, um, new areas of science uh, almost uh, from uh, nothing. But um, these people were uh, also uh, risking uh, their own life uh, in order to do that because uh, uh, dissecting a cadaver in order to, um, in order to uh, design the anatomy, uh, such a precious uh, tool for surgeons and doctors, uh, was illegal. And, uh, it's a taboo, really. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, these people were really uh, on a mission. They really wanted to advance the, uh, the knowledge of the human, um, human beings. We actually uh, also um, invented many, many other tools and, uh, you know, like, for example, uh, um, one of the... Uh, very few Nobel Prizes uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, that was given to an Italian uh, was given more than 100 years ago to um, somebody by the name of Golgi, who um, actually uh, defined uh, um, very well how to study uh, the uh, microscopic anatomy of, uh, of a kidney. And, um, and we have many, many, um, you know, if we go uh, back uh, 600 years ago, uh, they, uh, uh, there were people in Italy uh, that uh, were um, able uh, to operate the cataract. Uh, and, we are, <laughs> and we are talking uh, at the time where uh, the um, anatomy of the eye was not really clearly uh, uh, clearly defined. Um, so I think uh, I think we uh, we have uh, um, we had and we still have uh, great great uh, um, scientist, great uh, physician, great surgeons. Um, the only sad note. Uh, that I, um, you know, unfortunately um, experience uh, now uh, every year from many, many years uh, is the fact that uh, um, a number of our 
young physicians and scientists, um, they go abroad um, in order to, uh, you know, to study, uh, to learn more, uh, to become really good at what they want to do. And, um, and, uh, uh, and then uh, if they try, and many of them, I would say the vast majority of them, um, uh, tries to, uh, to, to go back to Italy in order, because they feel, they really feel um, that uh, they, uh, they really want um, to give back to uh, their country uh, what they have learned abroad. And there would be a tremendous, tremendous injection of, um, you know, of uh, uh, new ideas uh, uh, and uh, uh, new uh, vision uh, for the country, for the research, for the healthcare. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, many, many times uh, um, they get uh, refused by the Italian uh, uh, system because, uh, um, you know, people that didn't ever move uh, is usually hired, they, you know, instead of people that uh, went abroad uh, and, uh, and then came, came back. <laughs> and uh, you have no idea how much sadness uh, gives to me um, to um, get letters for, from these uh, um, incredible scholars. Uh, I unfortunately get letters like that, not because I can do anything, uh, but because, you know, I'm relatively well known, I'm Italian, I'm a, a physician. So some of them get my email address uh, uh, from the web and then write to me about their experience. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's really sad uh, to learn from people that uh, does not have resentment because uh, when, usually, when they write to me uh, telling their story, usually they already made the decision mm -hmm. that they uh, want to go back to uh, another country. Uh, they just want to tell the story and, uh, and that's really not good. And we can certainly uh, dig more into this aspect a little later, but I want to focus on your experience uh, first now, um, especially here in Philadelphia, where uh, the first hospital in America was established by William Penn in, 19, in 1713. And also the Pennsylvania Hospital of Philadelphia was the first to obtain a charter from the Crown in 1751. Uh, now, Jefferson, where you serve, is uh, one of the nation's leading hospitals, uh, medical schools, and international research uh, centers. What does your Italian education bring to it? And uh, what does the Italian approach uh, that you describe bring to the American healthcare model? model. Well, um, we, uh, uh, you know, we um, have uh, an incredible, uh, uh, I'm talking now by, uh, about surgery, we have an incredible, uh, uh, you know, uh, ability to perform surgery in uh, Italy. And even if I was, uh, uh, so lucky uh, when I came to this country uh, to uh, be trained personally by the uh, scientist and surgeon, the pioneer who invented the liver transplantation, um, Thomas Starzl, and uh, the, the person that performed the, the first ever liver transplant on a human being. Mm, and, and, uh, and I learned tremendously from him. Mm, I, I can tell that, uh, for example, I mm, working at the Catholic University of Rome at the Gemelli Hospital uh, with uh, an excellent uh, uh, surgeon, his name was uh, Aureliano Puglionisi. Uh, I mm, learned from him um, to have uh, the maximum possible uh, organization on the operating table. And, uh, and I brought some of these uh, uh, principles to uh, to United States, and there are a few steps during uh, uh, the uh, 
the uh, performance of an operation like liver transplant that uh, now are done um, differently uh, because of these steps that I have learned in Italy and I brought to the United States. Um, on the other hand, uh, uh, I, I um, try to uh, always try to uh, to help uh, help everybody, uh, almost uh, um, everybody that uh, I uh, got in touch with. So um, and and it's actually possible because uh, you know obviously. Mm, with the medical insurance uh, of private patient, uh, uh, the hospital uh, makes uh, profit. Uh, and uh, and if it happens to you that uh, you have uh, a patient that uh, you know you can save uh, but does not have insurance, you can uh, actually uh, call the administration and explain uh, that uh, you know you really think that you can. Um, make a difference because uh, because uh, that patient really needs to have um, you know a level of uh, care that maybe is not available in another hospital and uh, the administration if you make uh, your case the administration uh, usually uh, gives you the um, authorization to proceed even without uh, a, a Insur an insurance coverage. Um, at Jefferson here, uh, we uh, uh, invest uh, uh, dozens of millions of, e uh, of dollars every year in treating people uh, that does not have any insurance. And I think this kind of uh, uh, feelings, uh, this kind of culture um, uh, is uh, something that uh, uh, is very important for a, a country like United States. And you also spent much of your professional life here in the United States. Uh, how did your American experience modify your approach to healthcare? And how did your exposure to the U.S. scientific and political culture impact your work then as a mayor of Rome? Well, I would say that the, ma the main word is accountability. Is a word that uh, unfortunately does not have a translation uh, in uh, Italian, and maybe there is a reason why that word <laughs> <laughs> does not exist uh, in uh, Italian. Accountability, as uh, you know, means that uh, you have the authority to do things, but if you fail, you are responsible mm -hmm. for the failure. If you succeed, uh, you can take the pride um, uh, and of, uh, of your success. And, um, and uh, the idea of, uh, you know, um, give uh, um, or provide, providing um, tools that can actually measure the outcomes. So the outcomes is not, uh, what you tell, but uh, are actual numbers mm -hmm. uh, that people can read. And, um, and if we listen to, uh, you know, uh, many, many uh, leaders in Italy, uh, they talk about uh, what they want to do, what they have done, um, but uh, uh, we never listen to uh, numbers. We never listen to real data, or very rarely uh, we listen to real uh, to real data. And uh, and I think that uh, you know is uh, um, wherever I worked, uh, I, uh, I always had, and uh, also in a transplant center that I founded in uh, in Italy many years ago, I wanted the entrance. Um, uh, you know, graphic with the outcome. Uh, people admitted, uh, people that recovered, people that uh, did not make, uh, because seeing your own um, outcomes on a graphic every morning uh, will give you a good lesson mm -hmm. and uh, it will make you think if you are doing something good or maybe you can improve what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Now, at your return to Philadelphia a few years ago, uh, to go back to what we were discussing, you started a remarkable project of collaboration between the School of Medicine of Jefferson and the Catholic University of Rome, a project that really represents a unique experiment uh, of scientific and academic partnership, especially in the field of medicine. Can you tell us something about it? And in your opinion, what are the benefits for an American student practicing, studying or practicing medicine in Italy? Well, what you're talking about uh, is uh, a unique program that right now exists only at uh, Jefferson and uh, the Catholic University of Rome. So two important uh, academic medical center in uh, United States and Europe. Uh, basically, uh, in, in a nutshell, um, uh, the students have a, a curriculum of uh, six years. So. Uh, um, exactly the same number of years uh, of uh, any medical school uh, in Italy or in any other country in uh, Europe. And uh, in total, they spent uh, three years uh, in um, Europe and three years uh, in the United States. Not consecutive years, uh, but uh, the total amount is three and three. And, um, and this, uh, uh, what, what, and at the end of the six years, they will have a degree, a medical degree in the United States and a medical degree in Europe. So basically, they will be able, for example, uh, to um, go to a residency program like general surgery, internal medicine, or whatever, um, in any of the 50 states of the United States and any of the 28 countries uh, of uh, Europe. And, uh, um, uh, and this obviously is a tremendous uh, opportunity because uh, uh, they do not have to take other exams, they can just, uh, uh, and in fact, uh, right now we have only a few thousand of people from Europe coming to the United States because, uh, uh, you know, they have to take an, a very difficult exam. And uh, by the way, now there is a big issue because this exam has been uh, uh, placed on hold because of the coronavirus. So, so mm -hmm. I guess next year we will not have anybody coming from Europe to work in medicine in the United States. And there are almost zero going from the United States to Europe because basically in Europe you should restart the School of Medicine all mm -hmm. over again. So obviously this is very important for these individuals that will uh, um, actually apply and are applying. Uh, the problem that we have right now is that uh, um, we, we have an increase of application every year and uh, we are not sure that we'll be able in the following years to, uh, you know, to accept uh, everybody that is really good enough to enter in this kind of, of, a, of a special program. But what I think is really more important is what you have said at the beginning of our conversation, which is healthcare systems and outcomes. If you just read about the delivery of healthcare system in the United States or England or France or Italy, uh, is one thing. If you are actually educated in the in two different continents. So you will develop your own judgment on what is good and what is wrong. Well, you will not, be on, you, you will not only be a better uh, doctor, but you will be, I'm sure, a leader uh, to design uh, the healthcare and the healthcare system of the future. And this is also tapping into the contents of, of, the, of the show, which is really a bilingual, bicultural observation of several fields, including medicine, fashion design, technology, and how the double perspective really enhances uh, a possibility of observing reality more deeply and more creatively. So now as a last question, as a, as a curiosity, there are, like you, there are many Italian doctors and scholars who live in the United States and work and have success here. Um, 
Can you point at the areas in medicine where Italians are making a more notable contribution? And, and also, can you name some projects that are currently underway in Italy, which are particularly innovative or relevant on the American or international scale? Well, uh, there are areas uh, where um, Italy is uh, uh, far ahead uh, than uh, United States. For example, uh, um, you know, the treatment of uh, uh, kidney failure um, with uh, dialysis. Dialysis was invented uh, in the United States in the 60s, uh, but right now uh, a patient, if I enter in dialysis because my kidney are not working any longer today in the United States, my life expectancy is about 10 years. If I enter in dialysis today in Italy, my life expectancy is at least 20 years. Uh, so, you know, it's a significant difference. And, uh, and this is because, uh, you know, we have uh, great scientists and great, uh, and great doctors and, uh, and great uh, uh, hospitals. We also are really good uh, at... Uh, uh, research and science. We have uh, limited resources in Italy compared to the resource that we have uh, in the uh, United States, but uh, we are still uh, in Italy, we still have uh, a, an enormous number of uh, important uh, international publications uh, with uh, new ideas uh, every year because of the creativity uh, of uh, many, many of our uh, scientists and doctors. And, and uh, even during this uh, uh, tremendous uh, uh, crisis uh, uh, with the coronavirus uh, pandemic, um, there are uh, a few uh, groups in, uh, in Italy uh, with uh, possibly much more limited uh, financial resources than people in the uh, United States that are working on a vaccine and uh, they may be um, the people that will actually develop uh, the vaccine for this uh, deadly disease. Mm -hmm. And this is also related also to the recipe of Italian success, for example, in fashion or design, where the creative use of limited resources uh, engenders a more productive um, attitude than kind of like uh, being exposed to uh, much bigger uh, resources uh, that, that, that this can be uh, can, can be dull in a way. And also the fantasy and uh, the ability to break the rules, uh, which is uh, usually not considered uh, a quality, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, in order to Mm, uh, think about new pathways in order to think uh, about something totally new, uh, you have to break the rules. And, uh, you know, at times it's not easy. I did that in 2001 uh, when I was absolutely convinced that we could successfully perform uh, a solid organ transplantation in a patient uh, with HIV, and, um, and that patient had uh, uh, 18 years of good life after that transplant. But I got, uh, you know, a, a, a very bad letter from the Minister of Health uh, because, uh, um, you know, that kind of transplant was considered illegal. Uh, and experimental and uh, uh, at the end uh, you know a couple of years later Italy had to change uh, uh, their law so now uh, it's legal and possible uh, in Italy as well but uh, at times you need to break the rules. <laughs> well thank you very much for the conversation today we, we talked about medicine from a cultural mm -hmm. historical scientific and political perspective uh, and we also discussed about Italian contributions to global medicine and uh, to healthcare in the United States and about new academic partnerships uh, developing, developing between Jefferson and Italy. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Marino, for your time and your insights. Thank you very much and uh, uh, I wish you really good luck uh, for uh, 
you know, your project that is so important uh, for uh, both countries and continents. Thanks everybody for listening and uh, make sure to visit the official page of the show at www.italianinnovators.com for a complete list of all episodes and more information about the project. Also, don't forget to check out the YouTube channel and subscribe for more video content and the lessons of the Italian Innovators course. Uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Luca Cottini or ITA Innovators for updates, news, and additional materials. Thank you for your support. Arrivederci e alla prossima.